One of the most common questions asked of me is if a buyer can get a better deal by buying a foreclosure rather than a short sale or a regular sale. The immediate response to my buyer is if they know the difference between all three of them. Usually they don't, which is completely okay. People hear things repeatedly in the media and it's hard to sift through what's true and what's not true. I'm going to clarify the difference for you once and for all so you know the exact difference between all three types. The two primary differences between all three types of these sales are the length of time it takes for your offer to get accepted and the amount of information you will be given by the seller. We'll go over the price difference later on. First is the regular sale. A regular sale is what most people are already familiar with. You have a buyer who makes an offer to a seller or sellers. The seller usually takes up to a week or so to review the offers and then they let the buyer know that their offer is accepted, rejected, or if there's a counter offer. A foreclosure works in a similar fashion. It could take about a week to find out if your offer is accepted. The difference is that you aren't dealing with the seller like you're normally used to. You're instead dealing with an asset manager of the bank who's an organizer and a, basically a number cruncher. The big difference between a regular sale and a foreclosure is the information they will provide you as a buyer. If a few years ago there was a roof leak and the owner patched it up, but there was just that, a patch, the regular sales can disclose to you so that you know you really need to get the roof checked out. But the foreclosure is a bank owned property and they've never stepped foot into the house. They have no idea what's going on. In other words, the foreclosure owner will not be able to tell you anything that's wrong with the place or as the regular sellers will. In the state of California, owners are required by law to answer multiple questions about what they might know about a property. However, banks are exempt from these questions. In fact, most banks have you sign paperwork from them specifically stating you cannot sue them if you find out something is wrong at a later date. Now, the most interesting one is by far the short sale. First, let me explain exactly what a short sale is. A short sale means that the owner of the property is underwater on their loan. For example, the owner paid $500,000 for the house and also got a loan for the full $500,000. And currently the home is worth half or about $250,000. Obviously, in 99% of cases, the owner isn't going to come up with that amount of difference, be it because they don't want to or because they simply don't have the money to do so. If the owner knows they are no longer able to afford the property, they put it up for short sale. It's called a short sale because the entity getting the short end of the stick is the bank. With the short sale, the sellers are still responsible for answering all the questions on the multiple disclosure forms. However, the big difference is time frame which is almost never only one week. A short sale can actually take on average one to six months. Banks have gotten a lot better at approving them in a timely manner, but you're still seeing time frames of about one to three months. Luckily, if a short sale has already been approved, the time frame drops down to about two or three weeks, which isn't nearly as long. Now, the big question, which one of the three types of sales are the better bargain? The foreclosure? the short sale, the regular sale? Well, the answer is it kind of depends. I know, I know, I know. That's not the answer you want to hear, but it's the truth. It really depends. Let me explain. First, the foreclosure. The way banks price foreclosures is very simple. They ask the local agent that's going to sell the property to do a BPO or basically a mini appraisal for a really small fee. The agent will do so and tell them what the estimated value is. The big question the banks always have is, how low do we have to go to sell this property in under a month? And the answer is to almost always subtract 5% of what I suggested it was worth. So here we have a bank that's going to give about a 5% discount. The reason they don't mind is because at this price range, they expect to have multiple offers. If there's multiple offers, what does that do to the price? Exactly. It's going to push it upward. I've literally seen people get into a bidding war and overpay a property by so much they could have bought the next door neighbor house for almost half the price. Does this mean it always will get multiple offers and that the price will get pushed higher? No, but they don't care. They want to dump this property as quickly as possible. A regular sale may have the same thinking, but not always. Pricing a property as a seller and agent is absolutely key. Some sellers just want to get rid of the property and be done with the process. Most want to price it properly and get one to three seriously interested buyers and work with them on getting close to what's their asking price. 
Then there's that few that like to overprice to test the waters and leave room for negotiation, which almost always results in a property that lingers on the market and never gets sold. Or it gets sold, but for much, much less than they could have gotten if they priced it properly in the first place. Finally, the short sale. The great thing about the short sale pricing is that 99% of the time, the sellers don't care what the property fetches for one simple reason. The sellers are going to make a single penny from the sale. In almost every scenario of a short sale, the seller simply wants out of the situation. If you're selling your property and you know you're not going to make a single dollar, are you going to try and get the most money for your place or are you going to try and sell it as quickly as possible? you're obviously going to price it slightly below market to get an offer as quickly as you can. Now you understand that just trying to pick out a foreclosure might not be the best bet. You have to look at all the options. The only variable here is if you'd be willing to wait a while for a short sale to go through. Until then, next time you have someone tell you that foreclosures always give you the best deal compared to a short sale or a regular sale, ask them if they really know the difference. Just try not to have too much fun with them. Now that's good to know.